Well, welcome to uh, week two of our uh, social distancing here at Dalton Hill Baptist Church. Uh, just a reminder why we're doing it is a concern for our members that we don't, uh, age of our members is, and everything else. We don't want to get sick and catch the virus. And also just an obedience in Romans 13, 1, to be obedience to our government, who has asked us to both federally and locally. And as of right now, Governor Stead has asked us to go through at least April 5th uh, and possibly Easter Sunday on the 12th. Uh, Governor, I mean, excuse me, uh, President Trump had hoped to be open, having us open on the 12th. We'll just have to wait and see. And those of you that wanted to, some of you have sent in some gifts. If that's what you want to do, to send it to the regular address of the church. Last week, if you remember, our, for our little devotional that we did, we did, what are our eyes fixed on? It's easy to fix on a lot of different things with what all's going on. If you remember in Hebrews 12 and verse 2, we're told to fix our eyes on Jesus. And when Peter did that in Matthew 14, you noticed he walked on water. But when he turned and saw the circumstances and the storm and the waves, he started to sink. So last week we just talked about what are our eyes fixed on. Today, the devotional, I like to ask the question, what is our purpose? I think right now in the middle of this epidemic that we have, our natural instinct is that of survival. You, uh, you see it naturally. You have it also people fear of death. So they'll quarantine. They'll do a lot of things. They go to the grocery store and hoard and a lot of fighting going over to trying to get toilet paper or all the different necessities. Do it for concern of family or friends, but just the survival. I think of something else that comes to mind is that of service. You think of the first responders and the medics. They also have a survival instinct, but yet they're out there serving. We're scared to death of coming in contact with someone who might have the virus. They knowingly come in contact and serve those that do have. So you might want to con con consider really uh, thinking of them, praying for their protection, and doing whatever we can in our means to help them. We can do that, I think, creative, creatively. Uh, we've seen that just uh, today. I saw uh, just before I came up here to work on this at church uh, that even Oklahoma Joe's uh, decided that uh, in order to help revenue but to help the community, he even said, well, I have access to meat and to eggs and uh, different things. And so he's having his distributors bring it to the store. And then those of us that can't find the eggs or whatever, he's having you call in ahead of time and come in and place an order and they'll deliver it to us. They're getting creative. And so I think we can uh, think of other things, that how we can be creative as well, uh, whether it's the kids going out on sidewalks and uh, doing things on sidewalks, creative to be, have some things to do. Uh, are we uh, letting them use our drive, a sidewalk or driveway, or are we doing like others I've heard of that uh, won't allow anybody to get anywhere close, even in their own yard? So think about it as we're looking at it. The question, again, I asked is, what is our purpose? You think about it, and I'll give you some examples. In Acts 13, 36, it makes this statement about David. And so David, talking about King David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep or died. God had a purpose for David. In Psalm 70. 872, it tells us that his purpose was to shepherd the, uh, Israel with integrity. And the question begs us again, what is our purpose? What do we have us here? In verse 22, it says that David was a man after God's own heart, which meant he did God's will, is how it defines it. So again, our question is, what is our purpose? In the midst of this epidemic that we have going on, we, it's easy to think about survival but we need to be thinking about our purpose and how we can be creative to carry out our purpose. Think about it. The, our church is going through the vision team, and we have looked at and feel like our historically past and present and future is that of rescuing. And then also that of redeployment, or getting people back into ministry either that haven't been or that have been hurt and want to get back. But how then are we serving the Lord in the midst of this epidemic or not knowing even how long our own time is. 
So let me give you some points I think about that might help us focus and what our purpose is. The first one is that of uh, we need to prioritize. You think about it in Psalms 139.16, it makes the statement that our days are ordained for me. So before I was ever born, God determined my days. I don't know how long I have. And if we catch the virus, many of us will survive, but others won't in a very quick, short period of time. We could be with the Lord. In Psalms 90 and verse 12, it says, So teach us to number our days. So I think prioritizing, are we numbering the days? You think about it, we have the same thing down in Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So in the midst of all this, are we really taking time? We have a lot more time at home, time to ourselves. Are we really stopping and prioritizing and thinking, am I doing what God wants me to do in the best way? We also saw, if you remember a few weeks ago in Ephesians, as we are going through our study in Ephesians, that we are to be act in chapter 5 and verse 16, to walking as wise man, men, making the most of our time. So we think about it, as we're looking back through what is our purpose, would be that of prioritizing. And we're thinking of our purpose as well. If you think about it, God's will is defined or can be looked at in three different ways. You have his declared will, which means you, can, you and I cannot change it. For instance, he said, I'll never destroy the world by water again, and he gave us the rainbow. His declared will. His desired will, or desired will, is what he wants us to do, but it's up to us. As I mentioned in Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew 5, we are to be a light and salt. That is his desire, and he wants us to do that. You also have his, uh, you think about the other part, just his specific designed will for each one of us. Uh, we have different gifts, and how does God want me to then fulfill his purpose for me on this life? So if we think about it, the first thing then would be that of prioritizing it. The second one, I think, would be that of purpose. We, how are we purposing? What does he want me to do? You can see this, and you look at it in Second Corinthians, as well as in First Corinthians. In First Corinthians, you remember when uh, Bill came and spoke, he spoke on verse 1 and verse 2, and it makes the statement, Let men regard us in this matter as servants of God, as stewards of the mysteries of God. More is required of a steward to be found faithful. God has given us ministry of being stewards. Being his representative, he's given us resources, given us gifts, and how are we doing it? So in the midst of this epidemic, what are we doing? Are we serving each other? Are we carrying out these different things? It could be through a text, a phone call. We may have to be like others and get creative. The uh, vision team was trying to put together a visitation uh, looking program we're trying to look at. Uh, but even now, I'm trying to think of how I can uh, call her everyone in the next two weeks on the phone whether I get a hold of everyone or not I don't know but I can't see you at church but I can at least reach out and try to call you but again all of us can be thinking of this too we can be prioritizing and then in what is our purpose how can I serve with the gifts that I have you have the same thing in uh, talking about the purpose and over in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 if you remember in verse 18 we've seen it before and then also through 20 or so, it makes the statement that God has given the minist- us the ministry of reconciliation, to reconcile, bringing people to uh, back to Him. That could be from a non-believer to a believer, uh, to, excuse me, from a non-believer to Christ, or it could be from one believer to another, as you find in Philippians chapter 4 with the two ladies. It reminds me of this uh, talking with a church member yesterday. And uh, they made the statement that they'd been going to Walmart for a long time, and a person that works there had had a couple of strokes and hadn't been there. And they then were thinking about their, their ministry and reconciliation and thought, boy, you know, I haven't talked to this lady about her salvation. And she saw the lady this past week and uh, just asked her, if you had passed away with these strokes, did you know Jesus is your personal Savior? Would you be in heaven? Uh, thankfully, the, Lord, the lady was able to answer yes and had a testimony. 
but for all of us, we do not know. If someone catches this uh, coronavirus, it may very well be the last time that we see them if, you know, if they do pass away. Most will survive, but we don't know. So are we really thinking of our purpose of prioritizing and then a ministry of reconciliation and trying to bring people to Christ or back to Christ? You think the... Uh, I think it's interesting when you think of that too. So not only prioritizing, but also our purpose. But another one I think besides prioritizing and purpose, our third thing I like to think about it when we talk about our overall look of our purpose that we have, is the, we've been looking also on Wednesday night at First John. And in First John chapter 2 and verse 28, it talks about, For abiding in Him when He appears, we have confidence that we won't shrink away in shame at His coming. Because we're living our life as we should be, we won't shrink away when he comes. We realize with the coronavirus, if we catch it, most will survive. But like I said, some of us may not. And then I would have to appear before him. So in verse 3 of chapter 3 of 1 John, it makes that statement, And everyone who has this hope fixes on him, purifies himself as he is pure. So how many of us are thinking about it that we could... And it can be true at any time. None of us know how our, our days. God does, as we've already shown, that it's been numbered. But it could be in a car wreck. It could be at any time. So how many of us are recognizing and we are prioritizing what we're doing every day? We're making the most of our time. We're thinking of our purpose. At the end of every day, we can look back and say, I have done what God wanted me to do today. And then are we purifying ourselves as we look back on it and think, you know, I can meet him today. Am I ready to meet him? It reminds me, I think, we, when again on the question last week was, what are our eyes fixed on? But this week, what is our purpose? We saw David's purpose, but I want you to think about someone else in Genesis, if you remember, was that of Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers, and when his brothers came down later, as we know the story in Genesis 45, and Joseph reveals himself to them, he makes this statement, God sent me before you to preserve life. So David's, excuse me, Joseph's life was very troubling, first part of it, for many years. But he saw God's hand in it, and his ministry was that of preserving his brothers and his nation. After his father passed away, his brothers made up the lie, if you recall, in Genesis chapter 50, in trying to say that his father had told them to come tell him uh, Joseph speaking of that he was not to take, seek revenge. It says it grieved Joseph's heart because he, he tells his brothers then, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good and for preservation of life. How many of us are looking and seeing God's purpose in our life and then or go out and do it, even though, as in Joseph's case, it was a hard life for him. And you'll notice he also was the first one that God took him home. Uh, of all these brothers. And so I think what is our purpose in the midst of all this? Just don't lose sight of what our purpose is, resulting that we prioritize things, we keep that purpose in front of us of reconciliation and stewardship, and we then purify ourselves so that we're ready to meet him whenever that day and time may come. Until next week, think of how you can serve others. You can serve others. You can serve